When I was a little kid, my favourite TV show was Fun House. Every week, four lucky contestants would use their bodies and brains to play a host of wild variety games. Things like go-karts around the studio, dodgeball, all leading up to the titular Fun House. This monolithic obstacle course, where each sexer was its own unique challenge. Those lucky enough to get into the Fun House then had the chance to win some pretty fabulous prizes. 90s staples like hi-fi systems, Sega Mega Drives, uh, sports bags. I often don't have nostalgia for this era of television, but there is a soft spot for these grand, compartmentalised game shows. Things like Gladiators and The Crystal Maze. No formal competition will require one person excel in upper body strength, general knowledge and puzzle solving, yet there was a time in the early 90s where that was the case. It's perhaps why I have a fondness for Arcade Pit. For the past five years, Arcade Pit has been a weekly game show broadcast on YouTube, and I emphasise game show. Arcade Pit is the modern day Nick Arcade, or more appropriately, Games Master. Four lucky contestants take on challenges built around video games, either knowledge checks of franchise trivia, soundtracks, iconography, or the playing of them. Simply, it's not enough to just be good at playing video games on Arcade Pit. You have to remember little details of their plots, sounds they make, or even better, be able to recognise them when they're crudely recreated in Microsoft Paint. Nope. Outside of a few one-off events, Arcade Pit's selection of games all come from the vibrant 2D era of consoles. Things like the Game Boy Advance, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Sega Mega Drive. This limitation is a perfect fit for its already nostalgic premise. These would be the kind of games people would be playing head-to-head -head in an early 90s TV production. It just so happens that, nearly three decades later, they're a perfect fit for low latency web broadcasting and pick up and play simplicity. What makes Arcade Pit work outside of its excellent premise is its production values. Year on year, the host and programmers behind Arcade Pit have improved the format with new games and graphical flourishes. Yet, despite all its advancements, there's an undeniable charm to Arcade Pit due to its creative problem solving. Smite, the creator of Arcade Pit, is very much the heart of the project. Maybe best known as a speedrunner for Rogue Legacy, he is of the era of early Let's Players who found their home in the Something Awful forums. The name Arcade Pit in particular comes from his own series of videos called Rom Pit, a term borrowed from Something Awful. In fact, many guests of Arcade Pit come from those circles. Proton John, Ty Tuesday, even the godfather of LPs himself, Slow Beef. The people who may do with unregistered Hypercam 2 and headset microphones, before the era of MCNs and content houses. Some of these people even come before the era of YouTube, back in the days of Blip TV and the LP archive. These somewhat familiar names add comfort to an already comfy premise. They're games you recognise, played by voices you recognise in a format you recognise. The great compartmentalised game show, except these rounds are powered by NES games and game culture ephemera. Arcade Pit could very easily bask in its nostalgic premise, yet year on year it continues to improve. Its guests become more diverse, as do the challenges Smite throws at them. In a better world, Arcade Pit would be the best known game show on the platform. Eventually, it could be. The premise for this series of micro essays was to celebrate other channels or creators, in particular, things that may inspire you. The premise of Arcade Pit isn't something I want to emulate in my own videos, but its craftsmanship and ingenuity is something to applaud. But it's in how Arcade Pit manages to recreate the splendour of the 90s game show as something that could be broadcast across Twitch that, I think, is something to celebrate.